here. She brought rhythm to the nation. It's the queen of pop, Janet Jackson. You should come every week. I love it. Yeah. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Very well. Nice to see you both all. Nice to see you all. Should we just slide down a little bit? Just go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. No, you're all loved. Uh, because um, uh, happy birthday for last weekend. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Were you here for your birthday? Yes. What did you do? What did you do? I spent it with a friend of mine. Oh, yeah. A very good friend. <laughs> friends, I should say, went to dinner, and uh, that was about it. It's what a bit say? dull, Janet. I was hoping for something. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for something even more showbiz, Janet, to be honest. Not in the least bit dull. We've all been to dinner, haven't we? We've all had dinner. <laughs> you know, ZZ's nice. They do an early bird. <laughs> yeah. Now, Tyler, of course, yes. you're the boss. The, the very successful rich boss. What did you get, Janet, for her birthday? Oh, no. <laughs> well, you obviously got you something good. You know what? I just realized it was her birthday when you said it. <laughs> I'm sitting here kicking myself, like, how did I miss your birthday? No, how did I no, miss your birthday? Tyler, it's fine. It's not fine. <laughs> it's not fine. I demand that you come to my hotel room after this is over <laughs> so that I can make it up to you. <laughs> I demand it. I'm gonna make it up to you. And actually, now, because, Marcus, I know you love the tweeting, so do, you yeah. knew you were... Did you, have you tweeted that you were going to be on the social media? I have. People greatness? are very, very excited. Very, very excited. Are you on Twitter? Mm hmm You are? Mm hmm Fantastic. Uh, do you follow me? Sorry. That's actually incredibly hurtful. <laughs> Take no, you can do amazing back, things, because I got... I was on a train with a good friend of mine, Phil Jupiter, the other day, and we were in Cornwall, and we were getting on a train and realised we were about to leave Cornwall without having had a Cornish pasty, which I know you'll both be massive fans of. <laughs> um, it's delicious. It's kind of so, meat and pastry. It's delicious. Yeah. It's, Beef meat? Yeah. yeah. It's all... Uh, No-one knows what kind of meat. That's the joy <laughs> of a pasty, is once it's in the pastry, it's nobody's business. <laughs> And so we tweeted um, what train we were on and what time we'd be arriving at various stations and if someone could hand-deliver pasties to our carriage, that they would be handsomely rewarded. Uh, by the time we hit Plymouth, two pasties. By the time we got to Taunton, we had 12. <laughs> 12 pasties. Guys. That is the power of Twitter. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get stuff done. I could get you a pasty. <laughs> That is the first... That's the first practical use I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, uh, we want to talk about uh, the movie you guys have done together, Why Did I Get Married 2, which yes. is the sequel to the first one, which you were also in, and you also wrote, starred and directed. And, uh, because this will give you a hint of how successful Tyler is. Tyler just returned from holidays. Now, you were in the Bahamas, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, you were thinking, well, my cousin Alan went to the Bahamas. <laughs> it's a bit like the dinner story. <laughs> you, weren't just, you weren't just in the Bahamas, were you? Yeah, I was just in the Bahamas. <laughs> where are you going with this? Where are you, going? you know. I don't know where he's going with this. You, you were on your island in the Bahamas. Y yes. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. It's I'd good be, embarrassment, though. I'd be <laughs> so embarrassed if I had an island. <laughs> If you ever want to alleviate that embarrassment, I'd be happy to take it off you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you can tweet about it, right? Yeah. 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 No, but the, the, it's sort of incredible. I was saying this to you backstage. You know, in 2010, if someone is as incredibly successful as you are in the States, you've had, what, nine movies since 2005, they've nearly all opened at number one, they've grossed hundreds of millions of dollars. It's amazing. This movie is going to be the first one to get a general release in Britain. Yeah, yeah, and that's something? Yeah, why is that? Yeah, well. yeah man, yeah. white time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? I don't know. You know, I, I'm really grateful to Will Smith and to Janet because the first time I came over was with Will and he just he said, listen, we're all the same. Just you, just you just have to open your mind up to the rest of the world. So I'm pretty excited about it. And, and thank you for having me here. So you, you're responsible for how well the movie does. So make it happen. <laughs>
It's all on you, Graham. He, he owns an island. I'm quite relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do tweet. fine without Britain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, never mind. I'll, I'll tweet that it's the movie's covered. opening. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And because, in fact, because of schedules, you're actually here quite early, because it doesn't actually come out till September, does it? Yes, it's in September so, 3rd. Oh, we'll, you will remember this moment, won't you? Yes, it will. Because you do, and amazingly, because I, I watch a lot of your, your back catalogue, and you do a thing, I can't think of anyone else who does it, where one minute there'll be a really funny fart joke, and then the next minute you're doing something about a really, you know, a really tough divorce or a domestic violence or something. You, you flip those changes. It, it's I mean, just like life, though. It's just like life. One minute you're in a very happy moment, and the next minute something tragic could happen. So I write from those experiences. But most of the time I write from fun, because we're having fun. And for you, as a filmmaker, having someone as famous as Janet Jackson on set, does it throw the production kind of off kilter in any way? Absolutely. <laughs> but, you, but you deal with it. You know she's there. But no, she came, she came in. Th that, that was my reservation about working with her in the beginning. But she came in, just did the work. There's no diva attitude. She's on time. She's all about the work and the focus, and I really appreciate that. So it worked and, well. And for you, I was really, there's a, a sweet story. I don't know when it was, where you were like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go out in disguise. I think, were you walking your dog? Oh, that was, I, I was walking my two babies, and I had on my mustache. <laughs> a mustache. Yes, I did. And really? I, I, yeah, and I was with um, was my husband at the time, and and uh, had my I had my baseball cap on, and there was a kid, a little kid, that said, "Oh, mommy, look, there's Janet Jackson." <laughs> and she's she's let herself go. <laughs> 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 simple, simple waxing. She needs the waxing. <laughs> and now, uh, talking about looking good, a uh, very famous image of you, cover of the Rolling Stone, oh. which... Wow. Uh, man. Whoa! <laughs> 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 now, I've always wondered, did you know that man? <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, OK. No, I just wondered, was that some really lucky photographer's assistant? <laughs> 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 You can't step in behind Miss Jackson now. And, uh... That was actually supposed to be the album cover. But it was the album cover, wasn't it? Well, no, just from the, the neck up, and then the back cover was just the, 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 the waist. Oh. Did he have good enough manners to, to warm his hands first? <laughs> just run them under a warm tap? I, I hope he washed them, but I, I don't. I tell you what, if that was me, I would never wash them again. <laughs> Let's show a clip of this movie. We're showing um, a really kind of serious scene. It's, it's um, further into the movie. You've, you've broken up with your husband. It's the one where you're on the stairs. I don't know if, we, if you want to set it up or... My husband and I are going through some serious issues and, and uh, I've kind of had somewhat of a breakdown and I'm ready to kind of get a little bit of revenge and uh, I'm, I'm having my moment. OK. Here's Janet Jackson in Why Did I Get Married To? Angela, I have, I have no more fight left in me. Please, please. You really want us to go? Okay, listen, can we make a deal with you? What if we just sit here? And we stay? that scene and I, I think about how heavy it is but when I think about the, the entire film like you said earlier there's there's so much comedy so you need to just play the whole movie <laughs> well, <yes. laughs> no one see it that yeah. island's small he's cramped <laughs> <laughs> he wants to knock through uh, <laughs> and, and watching it because there is every kind of permutation of like what goes right and what goes wrong in relationships. So I kept watching it, thinking, "Oh, I do that. I do. That, I do that." Actually, I did a lot of you. I was very really. really? Did, yeah. It turns out that wasn't good. The <laughs> 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 good things will happen to her. She's like me. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, 
when you guys watch, I mean, you wrote the whole thing, yeah. but when, when you watch it, do you relate most to your character or do you relate to some of the other? Some of the others as well, a bit here and there, but I definitely relate to my character. My, that was, I guess, the old me, always being very attentive when it came to everyone else dealing with their issues, but not really dealing with my own. Mm -hmm. That was something that I did very well in the past. But now you've changed. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> You're too cute. And you're going to do it again. There's a third movie, isn't there? Is that right? Isn't there? <laughs> I guess so. I guess you just announced <laughs> it. I, no, I don't know. I don't know. It just depends on if there's more that the characters want to say. Oh, no, no. I didn't mean these characters. Aren't you guys working together? Oh, oh yeah. No, yeah, yes. we're, we're working together. We're having a kid in about three... <laughs> 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 No, we're working on a, a movie called For Color Girls, and uh, Mariah Carey is in it, Maisie Gray, Janet, Whoopi Goldberg, Felicia Rashad. It's, it's an amazing cast. Of it's going to be phenomenal. phenomenal. You're in for me. Carrie Washington. <laughs> it's not in that lineup. It's, it's for colored girls. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> He's very versatile. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Am I in now? Oh, you're in. You're in. Yeah. 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 And we, we talked briefly about your music, how phenomenally successful it was. And now, are you focusing more on acting now, or are we going to hear you singing again? Or well, I actually uh, did the theme song for "Why Did I Get Married Too." It's called ah. "Nothing." This is the, I think we've got a little clip of, of you singing "Nothing." Tell me what could the problem be? The past is something I can't change. It's a brand new day. Don't you tell me not right now. I can't let it go. Very good. And because you, you've also got new material on, like a, a bonus track on your, you've, you've collected all your number ones, haven't you? Yes, I, I did, and I, I uh, had a, a bonus song, Make Me, which also, it was, what, 33 number ones, and that was the 34th track, but that has also gotten number one, so all the Make songs me. have been That's Make Me. That's phenomenal, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't as yet had a, had a number one yet. But you had a hit I single. Have, I have had a number 11 chart smash. <laughs> when was that? It was only 2000 and something. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a sketch show I was in, and then somebody sampled it and built this tune called Don't Smoke the Reefer. And, uh, <laughs> and that's, that's me on that, on that tune. I don't know if you're joking or... No, that, this, <laughs> one's, <laughs> this one's... I'm uh, really trying to figure I'll raise out. my hand if it's a joke, but that, this is serious. It was a sketch. <laughs> no, no, song no honestly. Song it was a sketch. He, well, it's a, like a, a dubstep kind of uh, um, sing thing. It, sing right. it for him. Well, it's not really sung, but it, it, it's, the sketch goes, <laughs> goes, do you smoke, Paul? No, I don't. Me neither. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't smoke cigars. I don't smoke a pipe, pipe. Pipe, 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 pipe. I don't want smoke, Narifa. Um, the, the thing was. They know you know now. Oh my god, it's him! It's him! But the thing was, right, that the, 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 the character was supposed to be completely inappropriate because that voice, right, there's this uh, famously racist British comedian and he did this character called Chalky White who was like this funny black man he did and that's how he spoke like no black man I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and, and that's what he did and so that's kind of what I was doing. So when it was on this track, I was kind of delighted and mortified at the same time. <laughs> what the hell, a hit's a hit, right? I you know this. <laughs> The thing is, uh, I'm, I'm not married myself, uh, but... <laughs> but Why Did I Get Married is all based around the idea you couples get together and they share mm -hmm. why they get married. Sure. So, uh, people in the audience who are married... Now, don't put up your hands. Don't put up your hands. Let's see... Let's see observers of human life. <laughs> if we can see... Who's married, right? Okay. So. <laughs> oh, now, now, you see, there are couples here, aren't there? Now, I'm now, yes, ooh. So, yeah, you are? Steve. Steve. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you are? I'm Jenny. 
That's Jenny. <laughs> oh, I married him. Uh, I, you, you see, Steve and Jenny. Do you think they're married? Yes, I do. No. <laughs> Marcus, if they're not, I think we should marry them here tonight. <laughs> uh, are, are you it's worse than you can ever imagine. You're divorced! No, I'm his boss. <laughs> What do you do? What do you do? Go. I, own, I own a golf course and he's my manager. You, you manage a golf course? <laughs> Have you ever been? You never thought about it? <laughs> Bit tipsy at a Christmas party? <laughs> Coming into the 19th hole, that kind of thing? <laughs> That, oh, now! Now! Do, do you know that lady? The one sitting next to me? Yes. Yes, I do. OK. OK. What's your name? Orville. Orville and? Diana. Orville and Diana. <laughs> <laughs> what do we reckon? Oh, the lady over here. No! <laughs> <laughs> I've got my eye on Orville. I'll scratch her eyes out! <laughs> Well, well, she was right in there, wasn't she? God, awful. <laughs> uh, uh, what do we reckon, Janice? Orville and Diana. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Okay. I want to say yes, though. I, I, I think Diana would like to say yes too. <laughs> no, no, no. I, don't, I don't think so. Why so definite with the no? The body language. Okay. Actually, yeah. her legs are crossed like that. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that from here. Yeah, you're yeah. good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Briggs, talk. I'm not sure, because I think the guy to Diana's left has been looking very tense ever since you started this oh. conversation. Oh. I'm thinking she might be married to him. Oh. Or if not, Dating. she's in with a real chance. <laughs> <laughs> and Orville can clean up over <laughs> here. <laughs> Are you married? No. At all? Not at all. Not even to your man? No. <laughs> Are you with him, though? Um, no. I mean... <laughs> Does he know that? Sorry? You're creating an awkward moment. Oh, really? <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Is this a sort of non-date? Is this one of those things, well, we're all going to see a show, it's free, if you'd like to come, you could. Yes, I've come with both of them. <laughs> well, bless you. Oh. Uh, well done, all the couples. I, I think we've solved nothing with that yeah. chat. <laughs> It's BBC One. Your mother could be watching Diana. <laughs> It'd be a quiet Christmas at that house. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, uh, we turn to Marcus Brigstock down the end here. Now, I've heard you talk about it that you, you don't, men aren't really built for marriage, you don't believe. Well, no, I, d I think it's not a natural state for a man to be in. I mean, biologically speaking, we are fighting a lot of stuff, ladies. Yeah? <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, biologically, we're, we're, we're programmed to seek out many and varied partners, Your Honour. Uh, <laughs> so, so, you know, marriage takes a degree of, of, of concentration. You have, to, uh, you have to think about it. <laughs> When you got married, you were very particular about how you wanted to look. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, you see, I had long hair, uh, and my wife, fiance, then begged me to get my hair cut. So the day before, as a special treat, I went to the hairdresser and I said, Look, I want to keep my hair as long as possible, so if you can just cut it but keep as much length. And they went, OK, what we'll do is we'll cut the top <laughs> and the sides, but we'll keep the length in the back. And because it was explained to me in sections, I went, That'll work. <laughs> And then, and then 
I got married, and it wasn't until the wedding pictures came out. I had a mullet. I had a mullet. <laughs> no one told me. I think. I think we have one of your wedding wow. pictures. Wow. Where's the <laughs> Lord? <laughs> 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 I look like a German man into scorpion. <laughs> what do you call that thing? What do you call that thing? The flower? The uh, buttonhole? Yeah, the buttonhole. And did you throw it into the crowd and that woman caught it? <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. That's how I wanted my hair to look. <laughs> how weird that you'd be here. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, listen, I know you, we all know you as, as a comedian, and that, that's what you do. And when people come on the show, the researchers, they find out a bit more about the guests. Mm. I hadn't... Your life has been yeah. extraordinary. Yeah, it's You've pretty had, weird. Well, you have, you've had bizarre... You've worked... The, this... You, again, I know you know him from the wedding, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 You're not married. No. Uh, uh, but it seems very unlikely, but you worked on an oil rig. Yes, yes, I did. Not, not the spilly one in the golf. No, uh, no, 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 no <laughs> not that one. No, uh, yes, I did. I, I worked on an oil rig for a bit. You know, after drama school. It's <laughs> 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 an obvious way to like go. Like so many people, I thought, hmm, acting or the North Sea. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I did. I worked on the on the rigs for a bit. And I was sort of originally, I was on as a kind of a roustabouty kind of, you know, deckhand. And then they realised I was posh and useless. <laughs> so uh, they made me what's known as camp boss. Uh... <laughs> uh, it's <pretty> silly. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, and so I was sort of in charge of the domestic... Drill harder. The domestic... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all covered in oil, look at us. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I was rubbish at that as well. I, we, we were given oil skins, you know, to, to keep us dry from the, from the wind and the rain and all the rest of it, and I didn't know you can't tumble-dry them. <laughs> <laughs> I tumble-dried mine and they... Do you know... Do you remember Shrinky Dinks? Yeah. When you used to put a crisp packet in the oven it would shrink and go hard, you could make it into a key ring. I made my oil skins this big, <laughs> like, they would have fit on an action man, so, yeah. And then, then, and this is a good juxtaposition, you, you worked in August, but then you worked at the Ministry of Sound nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> As a podium dancer. Uh, <laughs> I, no, this is true, is it? This, this is, is serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my, I did four weeks on the rig, and in the two weeks off, I used to go and work as a dancer. I could be in your videos, whatever, you know? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, I did. I was a podium dancer for a bit, and so I used to... <laughs> I used what did you wear? What did you wear? Oh, well, they... dinkies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little tiny oil skins, you know, pretty fabulous. <laughs> a lot of body hair poking out the top. And, uh, yeah, no, I mean, just normal. It wasn't kind of, not mucky. You know, it wasn't pole or lap. That's a whole lot of this. <laughs> um, it was just, you know, kind of dancing clothes, you know? Right. <laughs> and now, the other thing I genuinely didn't know about you, um, you used to weigh a lot more. Yeah, loads more. I was, when I was 17... I was much shorter than I am now. I was 24 stone. So. Now, for Americans, that is... We worked it out this afternoon. Yeah. It's 336 pounds. Yes. Wow. Or a They're small. impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Medium, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, this, that was before... <laughs> that was before the dancing. <laughs> that was before the yeah. dancing. I got That's so quite a podium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say a podium, it was more a system of heavy-duty scaffolding. Uh, no, I, I got so fat that I had to become a goth to kind of to explain to myself why people were staring at me. So I did my hair and, like, lots of makeup and stuff, and I go, yeah, everyone's just staring at me because I'm a goth. Whereas, in fact, they were staring at me because I looked like a Zeppelin with eye makeup on. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And, and, and do you still battle with your weight? Yeah, no, it's kind of an ongoing thing. It's difficult. Food is my, is my, my big thing, hence... Dial a pasty on the drain. I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy food, you know. With booze and drugs, you just stop taking them. But with food, you have to keep eating. So you have to kind of keep it in check, you know. I mean, that fruit bowl's been talking to me since I walked. Because <laughs> <laughs> now you've got kids, it's particularly hard, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You mustn't eat kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all. They look delicious. <laughs> 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 In terms of body image, uh, now, Tyler Perry, obviously, you're a very tall, handsome man, but if I was writing a film, right, 
and I was writing a scene that I was going to be in, and I was going to be on a beach with the other people. It's in. I would not have hired, uh, is it Michael J. White? Michael J. White, sure, yeah. Uh, I, I just, I'd be like, no, you can't be in my film. <laughs> <laughs> he has a horrible looking swelling, is he okay? <laughs> <laughs> No, he's ridiculously buff. Yeah, but that's why you hire him, because the people who are going to see the movie, they, you want them to want to see him. Because I, I, if I take this shirt off, man, I'm telling you, I, I, I look like that. <laughs> but that's why I didn't take the shirt off oh, in the okay. scene, because I didn't want to show him up. No, of course not. I thought it would be too much. It's his moment. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's my film, so I'll give him his moment. That's sure. beautiful. Yes. Oh, and... Uh... <laughs> You're right, Grant. You need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, and then uh, you've got a book coming out, haven't you? Yes, in the uh, fall. In the fall. What's it called? True You. True You. Yes. And it's not, it is a diet book, but it's not, not really a diet book. Yeah, well, people have asked me, how did I gain the weight, lose the weight, how did I get it off the, the workout regimen, what did I eat? So instead of just writing about that and the nutrition, I, I decided to go to the beginning, which was my childhood. And, and um, little anecdotes throughout my life, from my childhood up until today. It's not an autobiography, but it lets you know what led me to, to those places and those spaces and, and little things that happened in my life, self-esteem issues as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted it to not just only be for adults, but to be for kids and for teens. So it talks about it all. Because you had a weird nickname, didn't you, when you were a kid? I had a few. <laughs> 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 dunk. You're talking about Dunk. Yeah. yeah. Dunk? Dunk. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you spell it D-U-N-K. Well, my family spells it. They still call me Dunk. Here You're kidding. They still call you Dunk. Yeah, but it, it's short for donkey. <laughs> donkey? Yeah. Well, donkey is an ass, but... No, no. No, no. 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 That is so inappropriate. Don't make it worse, Tyler. No, because she's always had a nice butt. Oh. I thought that's what... No. He's wait. helping. No. <laughs> I, I I, that's what that. I mean. I, I, I would call you Dunk, too. <laughs> See her when she walked out here, man. I know. <laughs> no, you do look amazing. Yeah. And, and in terms of control. Control. Well, you know, <laughs> no, because it's, it's weird though that the people who like yourself who are incredibly powerful and successful and kind of everything going on, there's this bit of their life that sometimes they lose control of and sometimes get it back. Everyone has their thing. I'm, I'm, I'm an emotional eater. A lot of people, when you, I'm sure, when you're, you're stressed or something goes on in your life, you lose your appetite. You don't eat, you'll probably lose weight. And I'm the opposite. See, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, too. No, I'm I'll eat. Me too. And yeah. eat comforts. Absolutely. Yeah, I eat when I'm happy, eat when I'm sad. It's just like, <laughs> it's in such a good mood, I should eat this pie. <laughs> now I'm crying, I'll eat the other one. <laughs> Listen, uh, music back in his life because uh, mm -hmm. you're now singing on stage, or you're going to be singing on stage yeah, yeah. Uh, in Spamalot. Yep. Uh, yep. I am Arthur, King of the Britons in Spamalot, which is amazing. Uh, my whole. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh, I'm glad you're clapping in advance of the show because uh, it's the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. It's great. I I'm, I'm loving it. Oh, well, listen, we are hugely excited and thrilled because the creator of Spamalot is here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lord Eric of Idol! <laughs> Tyler's your boss, and uh, now Eric's Marcus's boss. I know, he came into rehearsals. I was worried if we screwed up, we'd have to give him our shoes and be flown out on a cloud. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you pleased with the cast so they're far? They're wonderful. They're very funny. Mm. They really are. And well, they've only been out three weeks. Uh, they're fast to see one of them. They are there. They are oh, they actually... are here. Look, yeah, there yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, there's well, loads of them. They're very, well, yeah, oh, the very, yeah, the warm-looking ones. The sort Just of worried me. people. Oh, yeah. bless <laughs> them. They're very nice, but more importantly, they're very inexpensive. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems that of the Monty Python people, you're the one, you're the standard bearer for the group. You've been flying the flag since, since back then. Well, I've been exploiting them mercilessly. <laughs> because actually, we haven't done anything together 
reception of the Albert Hall uh, for 28 years. So we haven't worked together that long. Yes, it is that long. You saw John Cleese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, uh, th this uh, spam a lot. Obviously, you know you run a Python, so you own the material. But at the same time, you don't you share the ownership. So in terms of getting the other pythons to say, yeah, far ahead with your huge, big, fabulous Broadway hit, uh, were they cool about it? Yes, because they didn't think it'd be a hit. Ah. <laughs> It would just die, you know. I mean, I think they were kind of shocked when it went when it went to Broadway and won a Tony. I think they were really shocked. <laughs> but uh, you know, I gave them money, so it's fine. That, that, yes, <laughs> they like that. the universal language. Uh, Jeff, yes, <laughs> of thanks. Um, <laughs> and at Monty Python, do, are you are, are either of you guys familiar with Monty Python? Because mm -hmm. really? Monty Python, no, 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 honestly, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the truth. No, because Monty Python is one of those things, because it, it's so enduring, the people who love it, absolutely, they have such a passion. I mean, well, you know, you meet them all the time, presumably. They just love it. Mm -hmm. But it's not one of those things that people quite like. It seems that they either love it or they just yeah. look at it in absolute kind of, I have no idea why that should be funny. <laughs> I know exactly what that feels like. I know exactly <laughs> what that feels like. <laughs> Actually, the that was a very good look. That was actually the challenge of Broadway, because uh, having to make a musical, I had to rely on entertaining people who had no idea what Python was, and, uh, and if they did and hated it, they still had to like the show. Because I, I was reading, I think it was in the 70s, you'd done an incredibly successful Monty Python tour. Was it in Canada? And every night you'd wowed them. And then, what, did we go to America, or...? Yes, we went down to California, and we appeared on The Tonight Show. It was a big deal, you know, we're on The Tonight Show. And they said, you can do 25 minutes material. And we did it, and it was an audience like this. And not a single laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we stood out there and said, oh, I've just spent ten years burying the cat. Who is it there now? No, it's not at all a well cat. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we did it in about ten minutes, and we ran outside, and it was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> we laughed, and we laughed, because nothing's funnier than when you don't get the laugh. Isn't that true? <laughs> you never had that. Not in the moment. Not yeah. in the moment. And when you do find yourself in, in a kind of, a, a, you know, a dark place like that, something going wrong, I mean, how do you deal with, with difficult stuff like that, Eric? Well, you know, philosophy really helps. I mean, you know, some, some things in life are bad. Uh, they can really make you mad. <laughs> Other things just make you swear and curse. <laughs> when you're chewing on life's gristle, <laughs> don't grumble. <laughs> give a whistle. <laughs> and this'll help things turn out for the best. And always look on the bright. You're failing in the dumps. Don't be silly chumps. Just burst your lips and whistle. That's the thing. And always look on the bright side of life. You must always face the curtain with a bow. Forget about your sin. Give the audience a grin. Enjoy it. It's your last chance and now. So always look on the bright side of death. I just been for you draw your terminal breath. Life's a piece of shit. The joke is true. You'll see it's all a show. Keep up laughing as you go. Just remember that the last laugh is on you. Hey, always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. Come on, you be louder. The key change, here we go. Always look on the bright side.
Do I get the job? Yeah. <laughs> so that's how that goes. <laughs> You'll cover that in your next album, Janet. Yes. yes. <laughs> now, uh, listen, you have a lovely chat. I've had such a good time tonight. Uh, but, but, before we say goodnight, just time for a few stories in the red chair. Uh, who's up first? Who's up first? Oh, hello. Hi. Ah, hello. Hi. <laughs> Who are you? Claire. Claire. How interesting. And uh, <laughs> uh, where, where are you from, Claire? Um, Cambridge. Cambridge. She sounds quite posh. OK. <laughs> so this is the, your best anecdote in the whole wide world. This is, this is the corker. This is the guaranteed show-stopping story from Claire. Well, hopefully. How old are you, Claire? 27. 27. This is the funniest thing <laughs> that's ever happened to Claire <laughs> in her whole life. Oh, God. Life. I was in Turkey teaching windsurfing. Um... <laughs> 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 Nothing funny can no. follow no. windsurfing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. Yeah. Do you want to go, Janet? <laughs> uh, I feel bad that I'm always in the driving seat. Uh, OK. Oh, yeah, hello. Hi. Hi. You seem too nice to do this. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what's your name? Miriam. Miriam? Yeah. Those earrings will have her eye out. Uh, OK. <laughs> OK, uh, Miriam, what happened to you? Basically, uh, I got on the bus and I suddenly went blind. Good story! <laughs> <laughs> um, Odd I... story, but... <laughs> so why? So I was talking to the bus driver, I said, please let me off, please let me off. He wouldn't let me off. I got off the bus, I sat down, I called my mum. Luckily, she was on speed dial. And then I got home... Can I just say, that's a genius detail for someone who's gone blind. <laughs> <laughs> I believe this story now. That's really, she's really thought it through. It's, really it's a good lie if it's a lie. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, then I got home, I had a muffin, that was fine. I got my sight back and I was happy. <laughs> Is that a, it must be a blood sugar thing, is it? I went to the doctors and he, they, did, they said it was just... I hadn't eaten breakfast, so it was that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. An absence of breakfast doesn't normally... <laughs> yeah, normally make you blind. I'm a special case. Uh, special case, I'm afraid. Tyler Perry, he hates you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get a walk. You can contact us via our website at that address. Bless you. Uh, thank you to my guests, Janet Jackson, <laughs> Tyler Perry, Marcus Brickstock, and the mighty Eric Idol. Join me same time next week with actor Justin Jackson, X Factor star Andrew, and the outrageous comedian Chris Rock. I'll see you then. Good night, everyone. Bye bye.